right, guys, welcome back to another video. We have some major news that happened yesterday in regards to PlayStation and Firewalk Studios. They are being closed down, which isn't a massive surprise. We will get into what has happened there as well. We have some updates for Call of Duty numbers, an awesome game coming to Xbox Game Pass, as well as an update for the future of Bioware games in terms of Mass Effect. I think a lot of people now have questions about that from the recent release of Dragon Age. Are they going to continue with kind of making a game similar to that in terms of art style and graphic style and then overall themes? We'll talk about all of that. But before we continue, if you do enjoy daily gaming news and content, make sure to hit that subscribe, share the video, like the video, and let's jump right into this. So as we know, Concord was a uh, huge failure, maybe the biggest failure in gaming or one of the biggest failures in gaming, reportedly losing over $400 million and they refunded everybody who bought this game. So they lost every single dollar for Concord and the game only lasted about a week, got shut down and they came out with a statement when that happened that they would potentially be bringing this back. There was some speculation because of files in Steam, some backend stuff showing that they were still updating the game, that they would eventually be relaunching Concord potentially as a free to play game. And it looks like all of that is not going to be happening now as PlayStation has closed developer Firewalk as well as another studio who works on a mobile game. So here is exactly what is going on. They say Firewalk Studios will permanently be closed by Sony Interactive Entertainment. They said in a statement on Tuesday that it will also be closing mobile game developer Neon Boy. So here is how they framed it as to what is going on there, saying after evaluating our games portfolio and status of our projects to ensure we are meeting near and long term business priorities, it was making the difficult decision to close Neon Koi and Firewalk Studios, which is, again, not very surprising after the failure of Concord. There was really one of two directions this was going to be going. They were either going to be closing the studio and just moving on from Concord completely or actually trying to relaunch it and trying to make some money back. And they fell on the decision to close the studio, which unfortunately for the people working there affected that is a bad thing. But the reality is that's probably the correct decision from a business standpoint, because there's no way that Concord was going to succeed, even if they relaunched this as a free to play game. This was a game that was dead from day one and it was dead before they even released it. it you could see the writing on the wall that, People were against this game. They didn't want it. It was really not making any big splash in the first person shooter games as a service multiplayer game. It really had no fan base for it and nobody to really make it something massive when people are already playing all of the other games that are very similar to it and they would have rather just stayed on that. And of course, you had the whole discussion around the character designs. Then you had the other thing that we were hearing about, which was the toxic positivity going on at the studio, that basically you couldn't push back on some of the things that you found negative about Concord. You were bit, you were shut down from actually getting your opinion out there and making any changes and differences in this game itself. So that has all led to this moment right here where Firewalk is shut down. And it's unfortunate. It's always sad to see stuff like this happen because people are going to be affected in negative ways. There's going to be people there that were just working on the game and just trying to do their nine to five, trying to feed their family that are going to be out of a position here. The other side of the thing is this, I think solely falls on completely on management to even allow this thing, get through the door and seeing all the writing on the wall before it launched to allow it to fail. It's almost like they had set it up to fail and to cancel other games as a service games and go with Concord. It said a very, very weird, weird situation here. There will be updates on this, I'm sure. And we will continue to stay updated on what is going on here with Concord, with Firewalk and, and this whole debacle here with this game. Now let's talk about some Call of Duty. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 has been just an absolute success so far in terms of its launch onto Xbox Game Pass. We, we saw the numbers on Steam the other day that they were higher than Modern Warfare 3. So the sales, as we know it right now, are doing very well. And then we have this information here. They're saying with the launch of Black Ops 6, nearly 50% of all active Xbox Series players in the US played Call of Duty last week, which is an insane number. And then double the week before. And on PS5, over 33% of all active US PS5 players played Call of Duty last week, up 30% week over week. So people are actually playing this game more right now than they were previously with Black Ops 6. I think Black Ops 6 is phenomenal. Every single game mode in it, multiplayer campaign and zombies are all really good there isn't really a dud in there whereas last year you had the campaign which a lot of people just did not like didn't really hit very well 
and you don't have that you don't have any of that negativity towards the game is getting very good reviews so all that i think is also going to help people playing it and then obviously it being a game pass just gives access to more people now it being game pass will cannibalize some sales on xbox specifically as we do have this on the uk charts only in in the physical games sales so this is not including digital sales but the physical sales for the game are actually down 10 percent and they're saying likely due to game pass which would make absolute sense like there are going to be some people who don't buy this game and would rather just go sign up to xbox game pass but the net positive i think for xbox on this is they're going to be having way more players because you're going to still be a top seller in the year for games and you're still going to sell tons of copies everywhere and you're also going to increase subscriptions to xbox game pass or have people upgrade their game pass tier and you're seeing a little bit of this here with this down 10 percent but still higher physical sales than last year which is an interesting thing as well they say this is from gamesindustry.biz and chris dring saying that the sales is almost entirely due to a drop in sales on xbox was inevitable with Game Pass, but Black Ops 6 are 10% lower than those of Modern Warfare 3 last year. Again, only in the physical sales side of things. And then, I mean, you compare that to what happened on Steam, the digital sales size on Steam are higher than they were last year as the peak and current count is higher than it was with MW3. And of course, as the more numbers roll in, all of that will give us a better picture as to exactly what is happening. But I'm gonna stick with my prediction. I think putting on Game Pass day one, very smart move, very good move. It's going to increase the subscription services. It's going to increase the overall player base, and they're still going to be a top seller pretty much across the board. He also points out here, Christopher Dring does, that PS5 sales remain steady year on year. And again, again, that supports, I would say, my thoughts on this, that people on PlayStation are not going to jump over to Game Pass to buy this game. If they've been playing on PlayStation, they're going to continue to buy it, which will mean Call of Duty is still going to be a top seller on the PlayStation platform which Xbox would be totally fine with because they're going to be making all that money off of the PlayStation users, which they can use to reinvest into the Xbox ecosystem and Game Pass and make more games. So I find these statistics with Call of Duty this year are going to be very interesting to track and see what happens because it will determine, I think, going forward what Xbox does with this game and how they utilize it within their ecosystem. Now, another major game coming out this year is Stalker 2. And I'm really excited about this one. I never played the first one, but everything we are seeing with or the first few of them I, everything we're seeing here with soccer 2 looks phenomenal it is going to be console exclusive to xbox for as we know right now from leaks that we've seen only about three months but that it may not be still that it may be longer than that because this game has been delayed and microsoft has had to help the developers more for all of the reasons that we know about and one of the things that is going to be exciting is mod support in this game and there's always that question as to whether it is coming to console and it looks like it is coming to console which stalker do to dev say this we are aware that our player base especially the old ones are waiting to see that our game will support mods as well we're bringing the mods to console so they will be available on xbox as well as the pc and this is great to hear because a lot of the talk i've been hearing about this game leading up to its launch right now is that people are going to sway more towards the pc version and one of the major reasons is because of the mod support well now if you're on the fence here and maybe you don't have a pc that is good enough to run it as well as your series x or something like that you're gonna get mods no matter where you do play which is always a great thing to see now when it comes to again another massive game coming to game pass xbox this year in december is indiana jones and the previews are out the previews sound very good but you always have to be wary about previews. I mean, we just talked about this yesterday with the whole Dragon Age thing and then the previews and EA selectively giving review codes to people based off of probably doing some vetting and who they thought would give it an overall better review than others. And we, we talked about the Redfall situation as well. I think Indiana Jones is going to be great even and be with these previews in terms of when it's released. I don't think there'll be a big disparity between the previews and the reviews. And that's because Machine Games has always done great stuff. So... I have no I have no worries about this game whatsoever. But one of the questions that people always do have when it comes to first party Xbox games is 60 FPS. Will this be available at launch on these games on the X and on the S? And it looks like it will be for both, which is great to see. It says here that Machine Games Indiana Jones in the Great Circle exclusive interview with Windows Central creative director Axel Torvinia says that targets 60 FPS performance on Xbox Series X and S. And Series X, not surprised, always impressed to see this happen on the Series S. 
another success i would say for that console and you you know people are going to look at the resolutions and say oh well it's such a low resolution but if you're buying a series s you're not buying it to play at high resolution 4k and all that stuff you're buying it for the entry cost and you're also buying it to play it on maybe a 1080p display so it hitting 60 fps with a brand new triple a game coming out in 2024 on the series s for the entry cost of the console i think is phenomenal and it's also it's just another positive thing as i said there's far more positive cases about the series s but whenever there is a negative thing people are always talking about how it was the worst decision that xbox made and how it's holding back the generation which i think simply is just not true if you're weighing the good side versus the bad side of the xbox series s so far in these first four years but indiana jones 60 fps performance mode great to hear we'll jump here because metal slug is an awesome series tactics games or just these styles of games I do enjoy. And Metal Slug Tactics is coming to Game Pass on day one. And it is coming here November 5th. So very, very soon. If you've been waiting for this game, it will be there just a few days from now. And now there's 20 minutes of gameplay if you want to go check out more of this game and just kind of see the previews of it. If something that you're going to want to play when it does drop on the Game Pass. But another great release for me, at least, that Game Pass keeps giving us. And it's the service to me that still is the best value. Okay, let's talk Bioware and let's talk Mass Effect because Dragon Age, has a, there's a, a bunch of stuff going on with Dragon Age. I said in my video yesterday, I'm going to play the game. I'm going to check it out, give it my own thoughts on it at some point. Uh, and But I am kind of worried a little bit from the stuff that I have heard from the negative reviews of it from Skill Up and from Mr. Matty Plays. And you could see that they were trying to go and appeal just to a more generalized audience, I would say with Dragon Age the Veil Guard, although I do think the combat and everything looks like it's a ton of fun and looks very good. But there's going to be questions now going forward about the next Mass Effect game. Will it have that same style as Dragon Age? I don't think it would be a smart move to do that, and it looks like they will not be doing that. It will have a more mature tone and photorealistic visuals. And this comes via X and a response here from Mike Gamble saying he's been contacted by lots of people asking about Bioware's next big game, and he is the franchise director and executive producer of Mass Effect. And he says, lots of people are asking me about Mass Effect now that the Veilgar reviews are out, and October 31st is close. Both are from the studio, but Mass Effect is Mass Effect. How you bring a sci-fi RPG to life is different than other genres or IPs, and that has to have a different kind of love says, I'm not sure I agree with the Pixar thing, but Mass Effect is photorealistic and will be as long as I'm running it. So there you go. You don't need to worry about Mass Effect being Pixar-y. It is still going to be photorealistic. It is going to be true to the series, which is a great thing. He also says, regarding tone questions, Mass Effect will maintain the mature tone of the original trilogy, which is very, very important for Mass Effect fans, including myself. I, I would be sad to see them stray away from what they have already built some great stuff here and obviously again this is another game that has to hit because andromeda just did not hit for a lot of people so they have a lot of pressure on them for this next mass effect game to be good okay let's jump over here a couple more things before we end today's video nintendo is announcing or has announced you know big chronicles x remaster for the nintendo switch great to hear it's the Dino Bay Chronicles X Definitive Edition releasing March 20th, 2025. I've never played this one. I've played other Xeno Blade games. I do enjoy the series, but I've never played this one. I believe this was the Wii U title first released back in 2015. So very awesome to see that is happening. Happy that this has finally occurred. Finally, Path of Exile 2 Early Access has been delayed for anybody who's been looking to get into that. They did put this out in order to ensure a smooth launch. Path of Exile 2's Early Access will be delayed for three weeks. The new date is December 6th. And then there's a statement here from the director, Jonathan Rogers. So if you've been looking forward to the early access, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. But on the video there, if you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up, like the video, share the video, all that good stuff. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.